Yo, what's up? This the Edge, always, and we're here with the Creating Life podcast. And the Creating Life podcast, you know, it focuses on different pillars more than sports. It's about life. It's everything comes full circle. And today we have one of my boys, Chris Johnson, to actually join us. He's blessing us with his presence. One of the greatest running backs to ever play in the history of the game. And today we just want to catch up with Chris and also get a little insight on his career, plus what he's doing now, and future endeavors. So Chris, glad to have you. Welcome to the podcast. And Sir. this is your time to tell your story. <laughs> you know, we're gonna let Chris Johnson give it to you raw from the man mm -hmm. himself. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me, bro. We got to have you. You know, I met Chris Johnson when he was coming out. Of, I met him at a draft party, you know, when yeah. I first met Chris. You know, I came to Orlando. I think we was at one of the clubs. Yeah, and JJ's. It was called. JJ it was Whisper, JJ's. right? And I'm yeah. like, they were like, man, you got to meet this dude. I'm like, man, who who is this dude? They were like, man, this dude going. He had, he had just got drafted first round. And, and then when I seen him, like, Dog got dreads, dog got everything. He reminded me so much of myself, especially yeah. coming out. And plus the entourage, he had a big entourage. I had a, right. I had a big entourage, <laughs> and I'm talking about it's just something about us when we try, when we make it. We try to bring everybody right. along with us. And right. Chris had the big entourage. I'm like, I'm looking in the mirror, <laughs> like, man, I used to travel with 20, 30 people, and then man. I see somebody like Chris mm. doing the same thing. It's like. I don't know why. Why? Why you think we do that, man? I don't know. But before I get into that, it's crazy. Like that you start off with that story, cause, man, like me coming up in high school, college, like you was one of the running backs that I looked up to, that I used to watch, and like, so like me, like going to a smaller school, like within ECU, like it wasn't like a lot of. NFL guys like coming back to ECU, um, and we was getting to see those guys. So like, it was crazy. Like I didn't meet a lot of these guys until I went to the NFL. So like for me to be going through that process and then me getting drafted and me having a draft party and then like for one of the guys that. I looked up to, and not just from your game, because, like, I was a guy with dreads, dreads gold, gold teeth, teeth. <laughs> Florida, Florida you style, Florida. like you say, the big entourage and stuff like that. Um, and then for you to show up to my draft party, like, yeah, that man, was that was like the craziest thing ever. Like, yeah. like googly eyes, like, dang, <laughs> EJ at my draft party. Like, like, well, EJ, Chris I know Jones. EJ ain't from Orlando. What he doing now? They were like, man, this boy raw. They were like, man, this boy. I'm like, man, I'm like, why? How you get the ECU? You raw. How you raw and you get a chance to lead the state? And you look at you, you did all these great things. Track mm -hmm. one of the fastest people mm -hmm. in the state. Right. Like, how we slip? How, how do the state of Florida slip up on Chris Johnson? What? What? How that even happen? How? How you get out of the state of Florida? Man, I think a lot of people say a lot of different things, right? But when I and I used to just say, you know, yeah, like I was slept on, they forgot about me and stuff. But as I look back at a lot of things, I can blame myself for, for some of it because like when I was when I was coming up, like especially through high school, I'm like, man, what, you only need a, a 2.0 to play football? 2.0 to be eligible. To be eligible to play football. So my whole mindset always was like, man, I'm going to have good enough grades to where I'm eligible to play just football. Just enough to play. Yeah, just enough to play. Like, I ain't tripping yeah. if I come in here with, like, you know, I can get – you go in there and get straight C's and be, and eligible, still be eligible to play. So, like nah, – I, I, I was on that, too. You know what I'm like, saying? Just so like, getting by. So, yeah. I look at that like that probably could have been an issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I feel like I took the hard route because even, like, some schools probably – would have been scared that I wasn't going to qualify. So, like, my whole senior year from, like, doing, even during football season, my schedule was in the morning I go football practice. 
after football practice, I go to night school. Oh, so you had so you had the lock, but it's the senior year. Senior year. I, so I yeah. did this the whole entire year. We we both on did top, the same yeah, thing. on top of like on top of that, that still yeah. studying and trying to pass the SAT because what my GPA was when I had a two point oh, I know like I would never be able to score a high enough SAT score to match because they had that scale. That's when they had the scale. So I'm like, yeah. I gotta go a different route. I gotta raise and my that's, GPA that's, up. That's crazy. We both got the same exact situation because right. I had to give up my senior. Year of having fun, fun that's and all that, have, yeah. all that. Yeah. The yeah. University of Miami held the scholarship. Yeah, see. for me. So see, yeah, and I ain't never. And then you got to think, like, sure, I ain't sure how much you weighed coming out, but my <laughs> senior year, I was one fifty, one hundred and fifty pounds. I was one hundred and fifty. I gained fifty pounds in college. One hundred and fifty so, pounds. Yeah, I was one hundred and fifty pounds, but I was Damn. still the fastest guy in Florida. I like, know that. I, like, is that one hundred and fifty? Yeah. 150. That's why you were so fast out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, <laughs> shoot, I was 150. You know what I'm saying? So I know that was a part of it. But I just know if we was in today's time with all the social media and all that, and I'm looking at a lot of kids that's getting these offers these days, I know these kids went better than me in high school. But the, mm. it's changing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's changing with social media and stuff. So I don't always give all of the fault to, like, the colleges and stuff. Yeah, they overlook. But I blame myself on some of it, too. But think about it. But, like, when you look at it, what if you would have been on that, what you have became CJ2K? Right. And I look at that, too. If so I that drove you, Yeah, right? that drove me because I ain't going to lie. My, my schools, when I came out, like, I wanted the, my dream school was to go to Miami. Miami Hurricane. You but I was fit. going to Miami, you and I ain't going to lie. that entourage my, at Miami. <laughs> yeah, going into my senior year, it switched. I wanted to go to Texas. Um, but Texas? Yeah, so those was my top two schools I wanted to go to. I either wanted to go to Miami or Texas. Why Texas? Um, that one Ricky Williams was running. He was running that ball Ricky then. was running that ball then. And, but it wasn't more so that. I was kind of like, I was in my feelings. because oh, so you, cause Florida, state of Florida. Because Miami. Oh, Miami, they won. They won. So, really. what what other running backs was at Miami during that time? Cause we we was loaded during a period of time. What yeah, other I was backs loaded. Was? So, like my years coming up, that was the um, McGahey, McGahey, Portis, McGahee, Portis, Gore, Gore. I yeah. think yeah, I think it was Gore. But no, y'all had um, my high school time. Y'all had Moss, um, Tyrone Moss. Oh yeah, from Pompano. Yeah, yeah. Tyrone Moss yeah. was in there. Or whatever like that. So I was kind of in my feelings because I, re- like, I wasn't even really getting no letters from them or none of that. So like I kind of go into my senior, I'm like, man, they ain't really messing with they me like that. So I'm like, man, then I ain't going to lie, I had went to um, I went to national track meet. And um, where was it? It was in Sacramento. Sacramento. And then like it was a lot of people from Texas out there or whatever like that. And I just seen the vibe they had going on and stuff like that. And then I started paying attention to them playing and stuff. And then you got to think at that time, Vince Young was already there. Yeah, we would, we would, we you would have probably fared better at the University of Miami. But no, yeah. the game, y'all, you, y'all still, you still, fit. I think that was a Coco era. Yeah. era. yeah, it's but it's okay though to, because yeah. at the end of the day, it worked out the way it's supposed to right. work out. And then, but I ain't go to no camps. Neither I don't know if you did, but I ain't go to no nah, camps. I I ain't they ain't really no, have camps. They ain't really have them like that. But really I know my them. era, they had like the Nike camps and stuff. I could have went to, but I was in track season or whatever like that. But it just ain't work out. But I look at it like, you know, I'm real like in faith, like I'm real believer in God and stuff like that. So I feel like it happened for a reason. It, it sent with. me to East Carolina for a reason because. Say if I would have went to Miami, I probably would have felt like I done made it, yeah, or you, whatever like that. Because yeah, you flashy, so you would have fit. Look at yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you too flashy for <laughs> yeah. Miami at 17, 18 years yeah. old. So it's crazy yeah. though because if you go to, if you probably go to that top hundred, my my year top hundred rivals, all those rankings in my in the two thousand and four class. That was my class 04. If you go to that class, I don't really think that you can pick nobody out of that class that had a better career than me. And that's the beauty. But do you think it's because of the way it happened? 
Because right. if, yeah. you would've, if you would have been one of the favorite, would you have had that same hunger? My point. Yeah, so that's why I feel like I got that hunger from. I'm at East Carolina. And it's so crazy because people always ask about that. Like, they like, East Carolina, 1D1 offer. Um, I always say 1D1 offer because it was only one school that was going to allow me to play running back. I actually had two. I had Connecticut. They told me, yeah, we want you to play corner. We'll give you an opportunity to play so you play? Did you play corner play. in high school? No, never. So they just wanted you because of the speed. Because of the speed. 150 pounds. Right. Chris Johnson become one of the greatest running backs to ever play in right. the game. Right, 150 in high school. So I looked at it like, all right. So I got these two options, right? Connecticut, they saying they want me to they, – so they bringing me in to play corner, but they'll give me an opportunity to play mm -hmm. running back. We all know what that means. East Carolina, like, we're going to bring you in to play running back. So In high school, you only played running back. Yeah, I only played oh, running back. But so, you was 150 pounds. When you talk about 150 pounds and fast, and then, you know, fast forward, and one of the guys that's one of the fastest guys in the NFL right now is the cheater. Right. You beat the cheetah? In my prime? Did you beat it? <laughs> <laughs> when they have Chris Johnson versus the cheetah, who win that race? It depends. It was two cheetahs. I, I raced the real cheetah for real. You raced the real cheetah? Yeah. Oh, I the real a real cheetah? Yeah. When? <laughs> for real. I gotta yeah. see that. At man. Bush Gardens. It was no. on National Geographic. Hey, I gotta see that right there. Yeah. I you raced the real me. cheetah for real. Oh my god! I gotta see that film. You yeah. got that footage. Yeah, you I got the real cheetah. Did you win? Nah, I almost, almost won. Yeah, I almost. Did won. the cheetah know that he was actually about to be racing somebody? Yes, but it was a thing. So what? Us. What made the cheetah know that like, okay, he? Okay, I'm about to race a human being, or he just was running just on GP. Nah, so what they do, you know, like when they doing the little horse races or whatever, and they got a little thing that they that the horses is um, chasing. Oh, like, okay. I forgot so what like, it's on, like at the dog track. Yeah, like the dog track. So we, we got we got these two lanes. So the the um, thing that he's chasing, it's in front of both of us. So he's chasing that. But the whole trick about it is, what people don't know, a cheetah is the fastest in the world, but they can't stop. So we ran a uh, sixty, but a sixty you got to go there, test the line, and come back. And so the cheetah. So they can't stop. Hey, we gotta so pull that. So we gotta pull that footage out. I gotta yeah. see that. So it take him so long to turn around. You know what I'm saying? So on the way back, he caught me at the end fast. Yeah, but, I but I gotta, I gotta, see, I gotta see that footage. Look, Could you beat but today's the cheetah, cheetah? Today's cheetah that you're talking about in my prime, of course. You beat the cheetah, of course. Oh, we gotta see that. We gotta see. Okay, of course, man. What the, like, what, what the cheetah ran in at the um, combat? Do you still hold a record? No, I don't the record. John Ross beat it. Cheetah, I don't think Cheetah went to the combine. Oh. Cheetah didn't go to the combine, but, man, in my days, my prime special, wasn't nobody messing with me, man. So the Cheetah wouldn't nobody. CJ2. And then Cheetah, man, Cheetah probably about 175, 180. So he's a little bit bigger. No, I was 200. Oh, I, but that's what I'm saying. I'm going from when you was 150 pounds. And then when you gained this weight, did we in college. Oh, so in college, I gained that's 50 when you pounds got in up. college. We're talking about um, combine. Our okay, so you're going all the way to up into then. That's what I'm trying. That's what I'm trying to see. Cause I'm trying to look at the timeline and say, okay, look, I came out. I was 150 pounds. Went to ECU. Right, right. Then, yeah. So I don't really know what my 40 was then at the time. Cause I ain't never really ran one. Like I ran 10-3 in high school. For in Olympia a, High School. A, yeah, for Olympia High School. I ran 10-3. But my junior day leading up into going into my senior year, where I really got on the map and a lot of the scouts um, really noticed me, like they came out. Um, I ran a 418 at junior day. 418. Yeah, I ran a 418. I probably about 190 at the time. So you gained, you gained 40, 50 pounds from the first day you went to college? From my college to my, when my senior year started. I was 200 pounds my senior year. When I first so went there, 50 pounds. I gained 50 pounds. In college. In college. What they was doing at ECU? Like, <laughs> you don't usually make that type of jump. Man, you know, in these, at these colleges, they going to put with the weight they want to put on you. But it was just, I was just so determined. Because you got to think, from coming out of high school, going into college, they already want to change my position because I'm small, right? Um... Then, in my head, like, me knowing I want to go to the league, 
I want to play running back. You know, in our era, to be an every down running back, you had to be at least 225. So you had to have some size. You had to have size. So I was, man, extra working out, extra eating, all the shakes <laughs> they know, give you. That's on the Met Rex so, and all that all stuff that, like yeah, that. Yeah, all that type of stuff, yeah. man. I gained, I was just determined, man. And I just think that's part of my, um, that's part of my determination. Like, I'm like, they telling me that I ain't going to be able to play running back coming out of high school. But and that's I, what I drove me. That what drove me. You know that what, what drove saying? you. That what drove me. So I ended up coming out 200. Four two four and like I think probably I that was, was probably, the record. That was the record at that time. Yeah, right? at that time I had held it for ten years. But like I Did think you, I, I started seeing they started paying people to win or they get a contract. You or get something. the island. You either win the island or you win a million dollars. Yeah, if you break it. But what they what you got out of the deal? I was signed to them. Oh, so I was, was signed, signed to them. To so them. yeah, I was already signed to them. Right. So I was getting paid anyways. We got it. it was just a promotional deal. And the crazy thing about it, the guy um, John Ross, he broke it, and he decided to wear Nike. Oh, so he went Nike. So he forfeited the money. No, so it wasn't like that. Only thing you had to do was if you wore their, if you wore the Adidas so you cleats, a deal. No, you ain't have the- to sign the deal. If you wore the Adidas cleats at the combine and you broke the record, then you win the money. And he chose not. To. He chose to wear Nike. Damn. So he. I so wonder he what didn't Nike. I wonder what Nike gave him. Somebody had to give him something. Something. Had to be a Ain't no telling. They had to give him something though. Yeah. But it is what it is. But like I said, I think that was part of my determination. And I gained fifty pounds, four two four, and like I probably was like one of the first. Besides, oh uh, no, nah, I ain't gonna say that. I can say war it done, but he was splitting it a little bit with my all stock. Yeah. But I probably was the first guy at that size, at 200 pounds, to be on every damage. down back. Yeah. No, I, I I see that. I saw you out there representing. <laughs> so out here on, on, on Create the Life podcast, we like to talk about more than just sports. Right. But it all kind of goes back to sports when it comes to full when it comes full circle, and it shows about. You know, it shows the person and how they was able to achieve success. And so we always like to talk about the mindset of the person that was able to accomplish those things or was mm-hmm. able to break those barriers. And when I see somebody like yourself that went in at 150 pounds, ended right. up being 200 pounds, you know, and then you, in, then you turn into one of the greatest to ever play the game. If you had to tell somebody in a, somewhat of a summary – what does it take to be great? I say it take determination. Um, it take will. It takes sacrifices. Cause man, I can remember when I was in college, um, it was a lot of people like over the summer. You know how them college campuses over the summer. I ain't sure about Miami because y'all in Miami it's was, always was cracking. Um, but man, well I'm at in Greenville, it's a ghost town because all the students go home. So you become a celebrity, but then once once it's over. But not even but not even just saying being a celebrity, but I'm saying it's a ghost town. Nobody there. So don't I'm saying when you wanna... there, when you there, everybody know you. Yeah, everybody know you. But when everybody gone is like ain't nobody there. But it's like you don't wanna be there. You wanna come home and like chill with your people or come home. You you Back then, you know, all your friends, they having fun and this and that. But, like, I used to stay. Stay back in? Stay back in Greenville. In Greenville. But my whole mindset was like, man, ain't nothing going on here. So I know if I'm here by myself or the couple teammates who kind of got my same mindset or got my same goals, it ain't nothing we can do but work out. We get up, work out. Go catch the ball, go run routes. So you had a, but you had a good core group that decided to stay back. Yeah, a good core stay group. Back, yeah, we had a good core group like that was gonna stay back. It was probably like four of us. But coming from coming like okay, so when you a young athlete mm. that okay, you go up there, it's fun, you lit, you become the man. Mm. But then everybody leave and you kind of bored. But then you can come home and everybody will celebrate your success. Right. You chose to stay back. Right. And that was part of. The me reason getting, you are where you at, right? Me getting to where I wanted to get. Well, like, well, I, but how 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 could like as a young adult how 
how could they fight that urge? Because when you got that crew with you, you, you know, your comfort zone, right. and then you're forced to go to a place that you've never been, like what, like what sent you to bring that out to say, look, man, I'm going to stay here and right. I'm not going to go back home. Man, I think at the end of the day, like with me, it's hard for me to speak on anybody else, but like for me, it was like I knew what my end goal was. Like I ain't grow up with nothing. Like it's t like it was Christmases that my Christmas gift probably was a pack of underwear. <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like I ain't grow up with nothing, so I yeah. knew what my end goal was. So like me coming home, like my mindset was like I'm like I'm looking on TV. I'm looking at ESPN and this, and I'm seeing all these other um, players like at these bigger schools and stuff like this. I'm like, man, only, my only way to get better than these guys or to compete against these guys or be, you know what I'm saying, be the man. But you, but you, I gotta but put you can come back work. to Orlando and do the same thing and come and work. Nah, it's so. too many. It's too many distractions. Too many distractions. Too many distractions. I but come you young. To, but a lot of times, like a lot of young kids. They get lonely. They want to be right. around their family. And for you to sit back and say, nah, this not, what's up? And then at East, at East Carolina, it wasn't a NFL bed. So right. that's somewhere you had to really dig deep. And like, did, yeah, you, you, did you know like, hey, I'm going to the NFL? Man, I knew it. I was determined. You knew you was going like, to Like, I knew it. I ain't going to say, like, for sure. But, like, when, when what happened to me is, like, once I got there, like, and then, so my whole thing going into East Carolina, remember, I'm 150 pounds. So the whole plan was, okay, we finna bring him in. We're going to redshirt him. We got two starting, uh, we got two senior running backs starting. Anybody notable? Huh? Anybody notable with a big name that made it to the league? Or? Um, we had Robert Jones, we had Jeff Blake, and um, David Garrard. You no, know I'm saying during the tent, during the time that you was playing, that I was, was there. Um, no, probably Andre Allison. He had went fourth round one year, but um, not so he was one of the guys that stayed back or whatever like that and worked out. But um, so coming in, we had them two senior running backs. They had them been there. They've been starting this and that. So, you know, I'm coming now. I'm going to gain weight, get stronger. I'm going to be ready my sophomore year to take over. So you didn't play your freshman year? Yeah, I did. Oh, you um, played. So, so, you... so what happened was that was the that was the plan. Okay. That was the plan. That was the coach's plan. We get the training camp. I mean, they're going crazy. At 151 pounds. <laughs> right. CJ so they 2K. like, man, ain't, ain't no way we can reassure him. Ain't no way we can red shirt them. So like you know, first game of the season come, we going you gonna start kit return. So I'm on kit return. So probably like my the year before we had them, we went one and nine, one and nine. The year before I got there, before you got there, yeah. So I get there, we start the year um, zero and two. So the third game of the season, they like let's just try something new. They threw me in now. First, my first ever touch in college football, like on the offense. Right. They give me a. Um, I run a sweep. I break for 80. Let's 80 go. yard touchdown. I break Chris for Johnson 80. Chris Johnson arrived. Yeah. So, so I, when you're going through that and you coming as a young athlete and you have to deal with these veterans, these seniors that's been there that feel like, I wouldn't say entitled, but you right. when you're a senior, you're supposed to be the one that's the elder of the group. How do you deal with or what was it like becoming the man and you bumping these other guys? Man, it was crazy because after that game, I think I had finished with like, I think I finished like 127 yards or whatever like that. And like to me, it was just like I was happy to be in there playing, contributing, and getting a touchdown, my first touchdown and stuff. So I'm thinking, okay, this was going to be, and then coming back the next week, getting ready for game week, I'm thinking it's going to be the same. Like they're going to be the starters. I'm be on kit return. We going, we come in the running back mean room, and the coach he like, hey, um, I'm just letting you know right now that CJ the starter now. How did how did how did the older guys they respond went crazy? To that? So did they start treating you different or? Nah, that, and that's like? and that's one thing I can honestly say. Um, one of them named Marvin Townsend. And Art Brown, they ain't treat me no different. But when it happened, and so like, hey, I'm about to take your job, but hey, they went crazy. Like they was like, God damn, whatever, bum bum, like to the coaches and stuff like that. But they never treated me different. Oh. 
Uh-huh. I can honestly say that. They never treated me different or whatever like that. But from then on, I started. Like, I was starting from after the second, so the third game on since my rest freshman. Of your career? rest of my career, I started. So when that happened as a freshman, and I took the job of the two scenes right then, I say I know I can make the lead. You know you're gonna make it to the NFL. I know I can make what it. What is that? What does that mindset come from? And to to be able to maintain that mindset from a young age. Where did that like? Where did it come from within yourself, your upbringing, or whatever it was that pushed you? Man, I think I honestly I've thought about this a few times. And I honestly think it came from when I was a little bit younger. Like, I used to look up to my brother. So my oldest brother, my mama used to let him play football, but she wouldn't never let me play. She wouldn't never let me play because she was always. So what year, what year did you start? You didn't play part one in football? Mm-hmm. No. First, so your first year was high school? No, nah, eighth grade. Eighth grade. and Eighth, then... eighth grade my first year of, well, down here City League. So eighth grade was my first year of City League. But leading up into that, my brother always played since he was younger. So, like, by the time I was coming up, I, could, I think it started, like, fifth grade and stuff like that. Like, my brother used to be working out and stuff, getting ready for the season. He used to be right there with him. Right there doing everything he used to do. So why, and like, then why, when why they, would your mom let him play and not let you play? I don't know. And so like, that's, that's my, my baby. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, youngest. I was the youngest. I'm okay, the youngest. So I got. So she wanted to protect yeah, the youngest. Yeah, my mama had four boys. She got four boys. I'm the youngest out of four. So I used to be doing everything with them and thinking once football season comes, she gonna let me play and, and then not let you play. I done did all this work and she don't let me play. So finally, eighth grade, eighth grade, she finally let me play eighth grade. And when I went out there, I did my thing or whatever. But I think that comes from that because all those years I did this work. And didn't get to play. And didn't get to play. So I'm like, like he used to come run his miles around the neighborhood. I'm right there, push up, going to the gyms, working out, doing all this stuff. I used to do all this stuff. And when it came to time to play, she went and never signed me up. So it was all that It was all that, bim- that build up. That's, yeah, like that build you know, it's, up. It's, it's, it's kind of... It's kind of funny you say that because, like, my mom almost didn't let me play right. football because I used to have nosebleeds. Right. And when you start looking at everything in hindsight, okay, what if she didn't let me play? What if your mom didn't let you play? Right. You know, it changed the whole family structure. Look at everything that you've right. accomplished and all the things that you've right. done to be able to help this family. Right. And a lot of times we really don't know what we're doing. They don't know what they're doing. But for some reason, you know, the light mm-hmm. clicks. Or they make a decision to say, hey, I'm going to let them play because when I look at everything I've done or been able to accomplish, right. what if the nosebleeds didn't allow me to play? What if your right. mom say, nah, I'm going I'm to keep my baby tucked with me? I'm going to keep her tucked, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to ask about that, though. <laughs> I got to ask her why she ain't let me play. You know, on the Creative Life podcast, we like to cover multiple topics. And one of the most important topics to me because I look at the situation where we come from and where we're at, and I think it's very important to us as former athletes or current athletes, and from a cultural standpoint, you know, financial freedom is very important. Everybody's looking to become, you know, in I would say independent or financially free or mm-hmm. put themselves in position because that's what I think, that's what everybody's chasing mm-hmm. to be able to live life the way that they see fit. Like, what would you do if money wasn't an issue? That's the true you. So I don't think you get a chance to really see people as who they are because there's so many other factors as to why they are where they're at or why they're doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about financial freedom, as an athlete that have made millions of dollars, when you sit back and you look at the thing, being that you've been in the position of making millions of dollars, mm. and now you're away from it, but you still hear about the statistics that say 78 to 80 percent of athletes go broke, and only 20 percent have money. Mm. What's your take on that, and why? Um, my take on that, um, 
Like, as far as myself, like, I think a big thing with it is um, knowing you have to change. And when I mean change, it's like once you're not in it no more, you got to know you have to change your lifestyle. You can't live, like, I don't care what you say. I don't see no other business or no other job that I, that, like myself, that I can get while I'm making $13 million a year. So I can't live like I'm making $13 a year. You can live like that when you're in it. Um, and for myself, like, I just had to change a lot of stuff. Like you say, when you see me, I showed up to the club with 30 people. How many people you travel with now? <laughs> you came here by yourself. <laughs> I'm by myself right now. But, shoot, like, honestly, like, I'd probably be with, like, two or three people. Yeah. Like but at what point, like, okay, like, I went into the league at 20 years old, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, you learn as you go. But at what point throughout your career? You played 10 years with three different organizations, made millions of dollars. Like, at what point did you say, hey, this not it, or, you know, I'm grown now? I think I can say, like, when I was – so my first six years was in Tennessee. Then I went to New York for a year. And then my last three years was in Arizona. I think once I got to Arizona is when I got to that point because it go from you sign these three, four, five-year deals to, like, now you you year to year. Yeah, yeah. Once you get on the back end of your career, it's like now you – journeyman or and luckily I wasn't a journeyman I was year to year I was with this I stayed with Arizona for the last three years. three years but it was year to year it wasn't like I got a three year 10 15 20 million dollar deal it was like year okay now after this year we're gonna come back sign back year to year so once you get to that point then you understand you gotta start changing things because you ain't signing these multi-million dollar year deals Know what I'm saying? So, like, you got to start changing things. And then especially, like, when I retired, like, it was crazy because it's like you so used to being on the schedule year in, year out. Yeah. Know what I'm saying? So now it's like, damn. You I'm, save a lot of money being on the schedule. You save a lot of money being on the schedule, like, especially, like, being on the schedule playing these games. You ain't got time. Only time you really can hang out like that is off season. And then you back to it. So now it's like you home back. I'm back in Orlando. I'm waking up on Monday. Like, what I'm going to do today? So you have nothing got, but time. And nothing but time. So guess what? It's Monday. I ain't got nothing to do. I'm finna go get into something, spending money. Just spending money. So even once I finish, like, I knew I had to start changing, like, once I was in Arizona. But I was still on the schedule, so it was easy then. All right. But once I retire and now I'm home and I'm waking up every day with absolutely nothing to do. But you got 10 years of doing things a certain way. Like, how do you break that? How do you sit up and it's, say, like, hey, you tell the crew or, like, hey, not today or, hey, this not what's up? Like, like what goes on in the mindset that you struggle with trying to break the crew or break break the pattern? I think with that, some like with that, people gonna fall off. Like they fell people off in your of crew, like it's gonna start with thirty, but eventually, as time go on and like you start changing your ways, like because I ain't gonna lie, at the beginning of my career, like we hanging out four five nights yeah. a week, especially in the off season. That draft so, party was deep. <laughs> yeah, see what I'm saying. <laughs> so then once you start the scaling back and. You ain't doing this or doing a lot of stuff that a lot of these people want to do and used to you doing. They start falling off, falling off, falling off. So did you like when people start falling off? I think everybody's situation run parallel. I think it's just human nature. Mm -hmm. uh, but how did that make you feel? Did it make you feel a certain type of way? Did you look at like, dang, they really wasn't with me, or you feel like, hey, I knew that man. Look, this not, this wasn't the people that was for me anyway. Nah, hell nah. I felt a certain type of way. <laughs> I felt a certain type of way because you gotta think like with me, I'm I'm not sure if you went back to your your hometown like when you was playing like living there. You know what I'm saying? Like went back little. So I actually came back to Orlando 
where I live. So that brings family, that brings homeboys, that brings a lot of people. So like then once you start getting to that later part of the career or retired, now you got people that like when you you know when you home in the off season, you at home chilling. You probably got 10, 15 people hitting you up, like, what's up? They finna come pull up, but hang around you all day, but, chilling. But, but then, now, now I'm going to play devil's advocate because I, I get exactly what you're saying. But do you think, as a young athlete, and this is for the young athletes that's actually about to go through the process, do you think, as an athlete, you play a part in why those people look at it like this? Because every time a person come around, it's like, hey, it's lit. Like, we outside. Right. So how can you blame them? You know, so yeah, but how do you look at it from that standpoint? No, nah, I can't look at it from that standpoint because that ain't <laughs> something that I would do. Like but everybody come, not you. But, but I understand that. But I'm, if I'm finna come hang with EJ, but at I start, his house, but I start right? hanging, but no. I start hanging with you. We always lit. No, nah, but no, I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm not even talking about lit. I'm talking about it's times where I'm just at my house chilling. And people are just around. But you, Chris Johnson. My point. So now when it comes to the point where, like, it ain't the same, like, I'm still Chris Johnson. But it's still, like, when it's not the same, like, now, like, you probably don't even get phone calls. So you feel like, man, these boys used me. You can say you. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. Yeah. When I can take 30 people to the club, drink free, they ain't got to worry about paying to get in the club. You ain't got to worry about buying a drink. And then not only that, just because you're around this entourage, you getting females that you probably ain't getting that oh, so if you, you ain't with them us. Up. But then, they, but, but then Point think about it. They lifestyle, they're like, man, you done, you done picked me all the way up and now you just going to drop me? It ain't dropping. It's, you done drop me? Hanging. Okay, so what you around for? Was that it? I don't know. That's, that's what, what I'm that's, saying. So that's, that's what I'm saying. Obviously, that w what it was about. So now when I'm just chilling and you come around like, dang, what, what we got going on today? What we doing? I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. We just chilling around how we cool. Yeah. Nah, we ain't I, doing I, nothing. Nah, I, I totally agree with you because I feel the same way, you know, because it's like for me, when I look back at what I've done and the relationships mm -hmm. that I've built and relationships I had with people, a lot of things have went uh, in a different direction now. Right. But you start looking back and you say, man, like, was it really real? You know, I look back and say, was it really real? Because I never changed as a person. Right. Right? I was still myself. We started out without no money. All of a sudden, I come into some money. I still, yeah. I'm going to do more for you than you ever did for me. My point. But now, all of a sudden, you know, now we got a problem. Or now, I'm this or I'm that. Or you got something negative to say. Like I, don't, like, I don't respect that, but I think it comes with the territory. So, what you're saying, I think every athlete can relate. Right, but it's it, like how do you how do you deal with it now? Okay, when you cross paths with those people, how do you deal with it? Like I deal with it like I, um, it is what it is. That's how I deal with it. Ain't no bad blood. Like it's cool. You know what I'm saying with me because I'm gonna still be who I am. So like, you always remain. Yeah, Chris it Johnson. ain't like okay if this person say Joe Blow, he used to be around me every day or he used to always be around. Now that I ain't in lead no more, he probably don't call me like that. He don't be around or this and that whatever. So Joe Blow, you use my boy. Yeah, so but <laughs> when I see him, it's still all love with me because I, it's cool. I ain't tripping. But you I'm learned. not begging for you to be around me. I ain't begging yeah. for you to be around me then. But right. it's all good. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's cool. So, if you, so if you had to redo it, let's let's replay this right now. But hold up, but before you say that, it's reasons though. I ain't just gonna it's reasons to why these people may like go their way or not wanna be on the same thing because now it goes from okay, I'm in the lead, I'm making thirteen million dollars a year. So we go to the club. We getting in. I'm. We getting in free. Doing we, all this know what I'm vibing. saying? We buying bottles. We doing this. Everything good. So now, okay, I'm retired or whatever. Now we go to the club. We get in the table. Okay, everybody, we got to bust down. Right. They so, don't want to do that. They don't want. They don't want to bust down. So you know what I'm saying? So, so go like, back to go back. So now let's get a chance. You get a duo. Right. And it's for. The people that's about to go through it, or people who never experienced it. If Chris Johnson, if Chris Johnson 
had a chance to do it all over. How could how how I'm gonna meet you at the draft party? Mm-hmm. How how many people I'm gonna see you with? You were probably only seen me with a a lot of family and a and a few homeboys. Like I can't say that I go back and do it different because I lived a great life. But I'm saying if you, if you, if like, you know what you know now, it like was if you lit. know, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, it was lit. But if you know what you know yeah. now, like me personally, if I was to do it all over again, right. I would have scaled back certain things. I would did things a little bit different. Right. Like I can't, I can't say that. You know, I regret doing certain things because mm. all those things put me in a position where I'm at now, and I'm, I like where mm. I'm at now. But sometimes right. you look back and you're like, man. Dang, if I could do it all, if I if I even knew this, and this this when you're talking mm. to the younger guys right. or people that's about to go through it, mm. like I just want you to be aware of the people that you with right now. Right. They're not gonna be there. They ain't and, gonna be there. Yeah, yeah, they're not gonna be there. Yeah, I would. I ain't gonna lie. I would have did that part different. I would did a whole lot of that different. Like I wouldn't. I wouldn't have been showing up thirty deep, man. I would have been showing up thirty deep because a lot of that money that I did spend. On doing that, I could have been investing in something. But right now, let's fast forward now. When mm. we talk about investing, we're talking about moving forward, financial freedom. Mm. You know, you know, I know you got Airbnbs mm. and you have a coffee shop. It's like mm. what made you get into the Airbnb game and is it is it good for mm. you? And I know it's all type of rules right. that are coming up that probably put a little Pull a damper in the business, but right? For you going forward, how did you get into Airbnbs, and and is it good for you? Is it something that's positioning you to where you saying, man, I'm still able to be all right? Right. Well, I think I kind of got into Airbnbs, like what kind of pushed me to that is from me um, doing my first business, and that was a coffee shop. Like, man. What's it called? Claremont Coffee? Um, just Love Claremont. Just Love Claremont. Yeah, Just Love Claremont. Yeah. I didn't Claremont, yeah. So doing that, man, having a restaurant, it's a lot of hard work. I can't even lie. It's a lot of hard work, and I never envisioned myself on, like, doing that type of work once I retired or whatever like that. And not saying like I'm so I'm used to hard work. I'm gonna put my head down and do whatever I gotta do and work like that. But when you doing a, that type of business, like you gotta worry about employees, you gotta worry about marketing, you gotta worry about a whole lot of aspects as far as that individual store. But when you when you're doing that, how do you take your the things you've learned from playing sports or from football and relate to those businesses teamwork 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 you know they always say that athletes are the best employees because they're used to working together right you because find that I, true yeah it's true because i know i play running back i can't do the quarterback job or i can't do the receiver job or the offensive line job so when it comes to business i kind of model it around the same thing you know what i'm saying everybody within this circle or everybody like with a business i feel like you need a team so within that team, you have to put different people in positions to where they're good at what they do. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't be the person so you that you become the general manager. In a basically, sense. you the general manager. So like I can't be the person handling all the behind the scenes, the paperwork, making the coffee, making the food, cleaning up, doing all that. I got to put different people in different positions. So why you don't go get them homeboys that? You came with thirty deep because them homeboys probably not, they never ran no business. So then that's that's one they thing I think them. we have we have a bunch of people around us, right? But you know, do they really serve a purpose at time? You know, just you at, at that it. time, <laughs> our purpose at that time we just want to hang. We ain't never had no money, but so are we, we just want to hang out and have a good time. So when like, I go back at it, I look at like you know maybe maybe. Maybe we should tell them like, though, like you don't need to be right here right now. This ain't for you. Right, and hey, you know something that I learned, and I can't even lie. I have like now, I have a better time when I'm with four or five people rather than when I was with thirty people. 
Yeah, but that's I have a way better time. Thirty is your comfort. Like me, I, I try to when I look at I, I try to bring everybody in and let everybody enjoy the success. Everybody enjoy right. the fruits of your life. So you think you're doing the right thing, right? But I never like when I went out with twenty, thirty people. I never had fun because I was always on guard. On Make guard, sure you were about everybody good. This because and that everybody world. come from different like different lifestyles. Everybody, you know, everybody kind of on go. Right. Everybody ready to, to like get in the battlefield on site because of that's where we coming from. Right. And so you really don't have fun. You more of like finding yourself like trying to diffuse situations right. than have fun. You 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 can't keep your eye on thirty people. Yeah, I know. You can't. Five four five people, you good and them four or five people, I guarantee you, those four or five people are people that's level headed. And that got your best interest. Like, cause you gotta think, it's sometimes like we used to like this real talk. Like you used to t- hang with 30 people, but sometimes like you probably only knew 20 of them. <laughs> Everybody, like, your home but every person has in. a homeboy. Yeah, they yeah. got two or three of their homeboys. Now that's how it get come together in this 30 people instead of like 20 or 15. But like, um, like, but jumping back to the um the coffee business or whatever, right? So going into that, right? So I kind of took one of your tricks out of the book, right? <laughs> so I was going into the um, business or whatever, and then it was around COVID time and stuff like that, and, you know, a lot of business had, like, you know, financial problems and stuff like that. So I'm like, man, so I did a three-deal, I did a, a deal, a three deal, a three, three store, store deal. deal. I did a three store deal or whatever, right? So I come back to tell him like, man, you know what, man? I'm like, man, I re- I might as well just invest in the whole company Get part instead of, the whole of just thing. doing these different stores or whatever, right? So like, I'm not just a store owner. I'm part of the whole entire brand. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we got like 50 stores right now. So you took yeah, you took the bigger role versus yeah, somebody Yeah, I took a bigger role. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm part of the whole entire brand or whatever like that. So um just going into that, that was a another But what made you what made like what made you get into it one and then what type of advice would you give somebody else that is trying to enter the business world. Right. You mean what made me get into the whole entire brand or just no, the, the coffee, coffee like, shop? Like, right. I hear coffee got one of the highest markers, one of the best business. I know everybody wake up, try to get themselves going. Right, bro. Be be honest with you, I was just trying something. <laughs> taking a shot. I was you just taking a shot, a shot at, at something at good. Something. Yeah, I was just taking a shot at something good and I'm like, man, I know one thing about coffee, man. People are addicted to coffee. Everybody needs their coffee. <laughs> So I'm like, man, and then now the crazy thing is what really made me get into it. So when I when I retired, right, I went back to school to get my degree. So I used to go to these different coffee shops to study and stuff like that. And like, I, I'm not a coffee drinker. But you saw everybody in there. I saw everybody in there. And then like when I used to be in there, I want to get something to eat. Well, most of these coffee shops they ain't got food like that. Yeah. So nowadays they evolve into Yeah, they that. they trying to evolve. So when I got involved in this situation, I see they had a real like menu. So I'm like, dang, that'd be dope. Something to bring down here to Orlando or whatever like that. So man, I um so I'm like, shoot, I'm gonna try it out. Just trying it out. And then, you know, the COVID had came and then the whole situation came. I went to I'm like, man, I don't wanna do the three store deal no more. I wanna One invest the big in, thing. in the business and you know. They went for it, so I did. Right, they that. understand good business. They know they, they got understand good, good business. They understand yeah. good business because you got us going way to Claremont. I went all the right. way to Claremont. <laughs> yeah, you know, they go out there. It's actually a dope spot. It's just far. Yeah, it's just you know. far. It's just far. So yeah. it was like that, and then like just going through the situation. I ain't gonna lie. Like I like business that is cut and dry. There's black and white. Black and white, yeah. and nothing more better than real estate. Right. Know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, I had and so a lot of my former teammates or former people in the league that I know, every time they like used to come down here and stuff, I'm thinking like, oh, all right, bro, we yeah, this and that. I'm thinking they finna say they had their hotel downtown or something. Yeah, Everybody out there could send me at the Airbnbs and stuff. So I'm like, Florida, the home of the Airbnb, the home of the Airbnbs, and then we got Disney. 
So it's like that's where everybody going. So I'm like, you the shoot, I'm gonna tap in. Yeah, like I'm you got tap some dope in. Airbnb. I see them. Like, you like customize your Airbnb, right. which is Cust- totally different from some of the other ones. Right, customize my. You got to pay my- more because it's Chris Johnson. Pay more as far as do what? people have to pay more to say I'm going to Chris Johnson. And nah, you got your see, image see, on the wall. Listen, now nah, see that's the thing that I had to learn within the business. That's all cool, but when you competing with so many other Airbnbs, you got to be in the market. You got to stay within range. the same price range. You got to stay within the market. Like Chris Johnson. So your House family. Co- what about when family? When you got a family family discount? Yeah, I got a. Fa- I definitely got a discount, but ain't nothing <laughs> free because it's true. You, bills still got to get paid. Oh, okay. Bills got to still so get we paid. We want to come stay at Chris Johnson. Discount. Stay at Chris Johnson Airbnb. Right. We'll give them the code. You got a code. Yeah. You got to give everybody. Yeah, I got two. I got two Airbnbs here in Orlando. I got one getting built in Brooklyn, in Miami, or whatever. So I'm in that room. Like right with, with all the different rules, you know, they got different rules within the Airbnb space. Right. You know, do that affect your business? Not really, because as far as Davenport, Kissimmee area, most of my clientele are people from out of the country. So, you know, they want to come, go down, go to Disney. Long term. Long term. So they stay four or five days at a time. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So it really don't, it really don't affect the business. Now, I was just in New York, and then they was talking about how they changed it where you had to stay a month or so. So I don't know what they're doing for different states. Yeah. But every time there's a, there's a business, there's going to be something that... That's new, especially when yeah, it's something you feel like it's, it's sweet. It's like it's always somebody coming to rank the game. Or somebody something different like that. coming. But I look at my whole Airbnb <clears throat> situation like I look at it like you know any business you do, you want to make profit and you want to make money and that's cool. But like I look at it like even if I even if I make enough every month just to pay the mortgage, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, like, yeah, I put a down payment on it, but at the end of the day... You're not taking a loss. Everybody that comes to at my house, they done paid for this house for me. So when it's time to hand it down from, to my kids... You still got a free and clear property. You don't got to pay right. nothing out your pocket. You got to pay nothing out your pocket. That's a win. <laughs> That's a win. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then all the money I do make on it at this point, and then if I one day I decide to sell it, it's all, it's all, it's all profit. All profit. You know, part of being a ball player or a former ball player, you develop this lifestyle. That's sometimes, most of the time, we're first generation wealth. A lot of times, we're the first ones to actually do this or encounter this. But we still have those family members. We still have our children. We still have all those things that we've. We were birthed into that are common to everybody, but now we're going into a different space. When I talk to somebody that like I'm talking to myself, you know, I say, how how do you balance? You know, I know you got children, you got two boys that are great football players. Look like they're gonna be great football players. How do you balance that with the lifestyle, knowing that hey, I don't work, I don't position myself, but I can just live life. Like, how do you balance that? Uh, it's crazy because. <clears throat> Even though I position myself like that, that's what I thought when I was retiring and I was gonna finish. But it's like now, like my whole mindset is everything I do now is for a generational wealth. For your kids. Yeah, for my kids. Like I can the money that I done made, I can live the rest of my life comfortably. But now you you're taking on the responsibility. So, now you are you, like do you get a chance to really be happy? Yeah. But so you're happy my, with Doing my, what you're doing. Yeah, my happy place is when I'm able to sit there and chill and watch my kids play sports. So you're reliving it through your kids. Yeah, reliving through them. And not like, you know, a lot of people live through their kids and right. want, like, they want to live through their kids because they want their kids to do something that they weren't able to do. But you was able to do it. I was able to do it. So that's so when people be like, oh, do you miss the game and this and that? I might miss playing on Sundays in prime time, that type of stuff. But actually, like, going through the practices and all that other stuff, I don't miss that. But, like, being able to go out there and watch my kids, like, run touchdowns or run routes and, what if like, your kid just make plays. But what if he wasn't good? If Would you still be good? out there? 
would I still be out there? Yeah, if, no, your, cousin, if your kid wasn't good, would you still be out there? Well, my kid's so young at this age, I wouldn't give up on them this early. They only but sometimes you know, old. no. As I coach football, <laughs> I coach youth yeah, football, they was right? Like how you talking about like? So it's, it's some kids, you know, like, hey man, you need to just you wasting yeah, your yeah, parents' I time. Waste, yeah, nah, I wouldn't waste would my you, time. Would you would you still be out there, or would you kind of nah, kind of push them towards them in, something in else? A different direction. Oh, you're pushing. Yeah, towards I point them, I ain't gonna lie, I point them in a different direction, and, uh, and the reason why I I be on coaching staffs now is because I'm not gonna let. Uh, it's a lot of these coaches out here don't know what they're doing, so I'm not finished. But they're volunteering, though. They're volunteering, so, so you got to respect finish them. Just, yeah, I respect them to the fullest. I respect them. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, like, this is like we was talking about investments, right? Right. My biggest investment is my kids, especially with NILs coming. You got right. two good ones. That's my biggest investment, and I'm not just talking about money wise. When you when you speak about money and time, when you put that together in any business that you have, those are the most important things. Absolutely. The time that you put into it. So, like, my kids, that's my most important investment. So, like, not only just, like, my boys playing sports, like, my daughter do cheer or whatever. She um, just started volleyball and stuff So you're like able to that. keep them all in the park, like you like doing, like Dion got every one of his kids at the same facility? Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to do that. So you don't have to be at this park or that nah, park? No, see, at this, like, now what it is, like, she's 5, day 11, so they not able to all be in one. Oh, be in one group. Yeah, so she do competition cheer, so she in a whole different place. So the only time where it get a little trickery is, like, when I have to go out of town to work and stuff like that. So, like, sometimes, like, I may be able to go to a game and leave after a game and fly out and stuff like that. Or sometimes I just have to miss it. But, you know, I make it work. So your kids, they don't really understand what they have, the, the sacrifices. Because, you know, a lot of times you see a lot of kids, a lot, a lot of guys that don't have children. And right. they they living the life. They out. They, live they outside every day. Right, right, you right. Know? Or you people like myself that got older kids. <laughs> yeah, see, you could just. Yeah, my kids are older. At, yeah, I look at your Instagram. You lit, man. We outside you, every day. You but, everywhere outside. <laughs> you know, they like, you know, one, like, there's pros and cons to having kids early. I had kids at, but not started but you, at 18. But, but, yeah, you could say that, but you did your part. Yeah. Now once they get to the age, now you but that's, be back But that's outside. what I'm saying. I'm saying, like, I had them at an early age, which yeah. a lot of times they don't usually work in your favor. So yeah. now- Everybody's adults, and I get a chance to kind of do me pretty yeah. much. I got one last. Yeah, I'm going to be one outside last when I get because it's, it's a be, lot of work. I'm going to be outside. How, how old are you now? I'm 38. 38? You're going to be outside at what? 50-something? It's outside a different outside, though. So <laughs> you're going to be at the American Legion. No, but I'm just saying. If you, so, you mean to, <laughs> yeah, so you mean to tell me if you going to – my? it'll be a different outside. You going to the – I don't smoke cigars, but I drink. So if I'm going to cigar chilling, having a couple of drinks, that's gonna be my outside. But that's um, a that's a that's an older outside. That's what I mean. I ain't yeah. finna be yeah, I like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, like I don't like when I look at it in hindsight, I'm like, man, okay, I know you're not supposed to jump out there, but yeah. it worked out. But now I can be in the club or be hanging out and kind of show them the ropes. Yeah, but by that time, I'm was like, shoot, I hang out a lot. So by that time, I'm going to have some but type with of your boys. investment in it. So it's going to oh, okay. make sense. So you're like, like you hey, say, I own the man, spot. Man, I can't wait to go out with my boys. Yeah, you got, how old are they? They 11. 11 plus. I I'm, can't you, wait. You going to let them go to 18? Uh -huh, 18. 18? Like, we probably getting dibble and dab a little bit, 16, 17, but... We ain't going to be too much into that. We're going to be focused, but I can't wait to go out with my boys. You want to take them to Columbia? You are <laughs> <laughs> going to Miami, man. We're going to uh, Miami. Yeah, we're going, yeah. we going to hang, though. We're going to hang. And speaking of traveling, you know, a lot of things, I mean, a lot of times we like to talk about and create the life. Like me, when I look at the whole scope of things, right. you start out with mindset, mm -hmm. and the build up is to get you to – Lifestyle and leisure. Lifestyle and leisure, I think the goal is to be able to travel and be able to visit all these dis different destinations and all these different places. For yourself, you know, what are some of the top spots that you was able to go to and why? Um, I can say some of the top spots. Like, see, for me, 
traveling far, far. I'm like, I'm not a big plane person. So like when I go like what's your what's your what's like your going limit? to LA, that's 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 far for me. So you five got hours, that's so you far. four or five hours. Yeah, that's that's so far from barely Europe. You been to Europe? <laughs> nah, well, nah, I ain't been to Europe, but, but I'm this actually. Year you gotta I'm, go, you gotta I'm going go, right? this year. I'm going to London this year. That's eight hours. Right. I'm gonna do that. But I, I said, I said I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start thinking different. I'm gonna start doing things like I'm gonna start. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be outside it. a little bit. I'm yeah. be outside. I'm going far. Yeah, you gotta. You gotta. Far. Like some places. Europe. That I you gotta go, go Europe. Like yeah, I don't want to. The places that I've been, they cool. Like I done been to like. Tulum, I done been to Jamaica, those places, them cool, but it's some places that I want to go to. I want to go to Egypt. That's far. I want to go to Africa. That's far. I want to go to China. That's far. I want to go to So you got to you got to go to get this mine. Oh yeah, and I got to go to um um damn. Fuck. I ain't get, it ain't coming. Dubai. I got to get going to Dubai. Dubai. I want to go to Dubai. That's Flex City. That's yeah, I want to check City. Dubai, man. You got a bigger chain to go to Dubai. They told me they'll <laughs> flex on you out there. You know, but that's that's one thing about growing, about educating yourself, and also mm-hmm. being ready to come back. Like, sometimes I look at myself as the messenger, right. ready to come back and show the people who I grew up with or people that kind of look to you mm-hmm. and you remind them uh, or they, they look at themselves in you. So mm-hmm. I always try to travel and try to get a chance to show people like, right. Man, look, these are things you gotta do because you're gonna grow. You're gonna learn something every time you go. Mm-hmm. But if you're not willing to get on the plane for at least eight hours, at least eight, you're ten. gonna be pretty much doing the same thing you've been doing. Right. You know. But when I when it, so so now, fast forward, you got Chris Johnson. So somebody look at Chris Johnson. Okay, you hear about you taking care of your kids. You have Pop Warner. Like, what do Chris Johnson do for fun? What I do for fun. <laughs> Like right now, what I do for fun is, you know, practice, going to the games. Like something that I did, like besides that with my kids, something that I did pick up, like after I retired and stuff like that, like Friday nights, I like going to the different, I, usually I pick a different um, high school. High school football game. Football game. I go out there and check them out. You know what I'm saying? I like going out there. I like sports, man. Like that's been my life for so long, so I like doing that, like going to check out. If I hear about a kid or something, like I don't have to know him, don't have to have no connection to him or nothing. Like, okay, they playing Dr. Phillips or they playing whoever. I go out to the game and just go sit in the cut, check them out. You know what I'm saying? I like doing that. I like going to different cities, just enjoying myself, chilling. So you just move around, enjoy moving yourself, around. hanging out. Well, when you kid. see, what about when you see that special kid out there? Do you, do you, do you kind of extend that invitation, or do you say, okay, you know, I gotta go say something to him? Are you one of those players? Or do you just sit back and sit in the stands and kind of, I will wait to see if he come around. Yeah, I kind of sit back and wait um, till he come around. Like, I think like one of the first kids, I kind of like establish a little re- relationship with and like kind of talk here and there with um said B said back so he was at Edgewater. Yeah he at, at Texas. Yeah he was He's at Texas legit. and his Great story stars. yeah his story it kinda it was kinda crazy because one of the one of my I got a um close friend that he's the running back close coach at Texas. Um and so you was part of the reason he went there? Something like that. So why y'all didn't, the University of Miami wanted Baxter, right? So I should have. You should have been. You should have called me, man. We could have made that happen. But the thing about it was, so he called me um, to Shard Choice. He the running back coach. He, he actually, played for Dallas. Yeah, he got drafted to Dallas yeah, or whatever remember, like man. that. We was in the same draft class. So ever since then, we met each other at the combine. We've been, we've been cool since then or whatever. So he called me like, "Yeah, man, I'm coming down there. I'll talk to your boy. This and that." So we had some conversation. You know, we still talk from talk. All the time, me and said Bill, whatever. But yeah, man, you should have called me, man. But what kind of NIL? I don't think y'all was what kind of NIL he got? <laughs> yeah, you got your cut. <laughs> nah, hey, y'all no know Chris Johnson. Hey, Orlando, <laughs> we let that boy get out of the state of Florida because Chris Johnson got his cut. Listen, Miami, <laughs> well, then Miami ain't want me. So my oh so oh so, so it's, it's a little bit why deeper. You wanted to go to Texas. That? Miami nah, didn't. I wanted to go to Miami first. 
See, it's starting to, it's starting to come Miami, full circle. Like, with University of Miami, University of Miami wanted Baxter, but how know, bad they wanted Baxter though? I think Texas probably outbid them. Yeah, so, exactly. And the fact that you got influence for you, but the good thing about the transfer <laughs> portal said Baxter, if you're looking, you so. the good thing about it is you can transfer one time. University of Miami still there. Oh, that's what it is. Only once. You only can transfer one time, unless you're a grad transfer or somebody. The rules are. I'm still learning the rules, ba- but Baxter we got some. Again. We got some pretty good guys. But Baxter, if Baxter you want to come to University man. of Miami, Baxter starting right now. I don't see. Man, we got somebody down there that's funding us pretty good, so he's going to help him. Let's help him push up his NIL with Texas, or get a bigger deal. Come to University of Miami, and they just beat Bama. Yeah, that's big. <laughs> <laughs> that's big. So, but yeah, we're here on the Creative Life Podcast, and we got Chris Johnson. And it so happened to be the same week that the Tennessee Titans, Chris Johnson team that he got a chance to run for 2,000 yards, one of the few players in the history of the game that was able to accomplish that feat, play against my Colts. But the game is going to be in Indianapolis. Right. And so when you look at the game and you look at the running back position, y'all got a beast over there. Y'all got yeah. the big boss in King Henry. And then we have we have our situation where we're right. trying to work that out. Right. But when you look at the running backs today, you know, and you look at the the things that's going on with the running backs, you know, right. what's your take on the running back position and going forward, how do you see or is there a resolution? Um I think it could be a resolution, but that's not probably not going to happen until the new CBA is up in time for. How many years we got? Like, man, I don't like I about think seven years. Seven years is a long I think about time. About seven years. I think it's in like twenty eight or twenty nine. So for like younger that. players, you got to understand you're fighting for the next generation. That's what, as a right. Hall of Famer, you start understanding that it's about the next generation. You right. Know, you may not get what you want but you still have to sit up there and fight for the next wave of players. So you have to take that in consideration. Do what's right for the next wave because you think back to where you're at now is because of the players before you. Right, and a exactly. lot of times they don't think about that. It's not brought up enough, and I think that's a point of emphasis that needs to be made. So in the future, I can see the running back position being a more valued position. So what would you do if you had – a 10, 11 year old son that wants to play running back, would you still encourage him to play that or would you encourage him to switch his position? For me personally, what I would do is I would tell my son, as a running back, you have to be able to get involved in the passing game. The league has transitioned to a passing league. And if you want to look at a player that's probably maximizing the running back position right now, which is the player who I think is the best player um, in the running back position right now. You look at Christian McCaffrey. Right. You know, his father was a receiver that played for the Denver Broncos, won multiple Super Bowls. Right. So he's familiar with the running, with the passing game, and the way he's playing the game. That's the way you have to go. You have to right. evolve into that. It's just like a quarterback. You can't just be a pure pocket quarterback anymore. You know, mm-hmm. you look at the evolving of the quarterback position. You, know, you got that run pass option. Same thing as a running back. I think we got to evolve. We got to up our game. We got to get out there the way we can catch the ball right. and run the ball. Right. I think that's the best way to look at it if I'm telling somebody that's young. Right, right, right. Yeah. My my take on it is, you know, I'm trying to transition my boy as the receiver. Cause not just on that aspect because, like, even before it got – crazy like this within the last this year or the year before like I just look at it on a longevity and financial standpoint like I'm looking at it like it's guys that I may came in at and you know at the running back position once you get the year seven eight nine now they want to start giving you vet minimum or two million three million but you looking at guys like receivers cornerbacks they in your 10, 11, 12, they still making 10, 12, 13 what million dollars. What, what if running back just come natural to them? If it could, that's then, like you say, you have to give them, you know what I'm saying? You got to let them know the things that he need to do to go into it. But still to say that, 
how long does Christian McCaffrey play? Uh, it's to be determined. At, I think at the, at that price at tag, the, at the price tag. That's and that's and that's the thing about it. Everything is to be determined. We're better to kind of judge based upon right. what actually happens. But right, right now, I think if I say any kind of ray of hope, mm-hmm. the ray of hope is Christian McCaffrey for any running back. You know, and then mm-hmm. when you go back to okay, what? Well, so how do you see Derrick Henry in long term of this game? This guy's he's pretty big he's, yeah he's a monster out there so how do you see that position or if you see somebody that's in that kind of reminds themselves of him or whatever coming into the league do you do you encourage them to keep being like that or you say hey what more could he do because he couldn't just go out in the passing game and just be a Christian McCaffrey yeah no nah, if I had a dare somebody that I felt like remind me of Derrick Henry go play stand up in Go play defense. The end. Yeah, stand but he's up naturally end. a running back. Yeah, I get that. But so, okay, so, so after so, so are we gonna do away I'm with the is, running back position? Listen, after the okay, so Derrick Henry, what he is now, when this contract is up, do you still see see Derrick Henry being a, a seven to nine million dollar a year back? Well, I would think seven to nine is low when you have Christian McCaffrey making sixteen. So when you start looking at numbers, that's not that's not a high number. That's a high number for a running back in well, year going in year eight nine still making no, I'm just seven saying, nine as, million dollars. As, as the that's money a go up, high number. If the top back making sixteen, and you saying a Derrick Henry, Henry making seven, I think that's a discount for the team. It ain't gonna happen. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting to see All right, how so we look at Zeke. But they brought in, but you had that younger but guy that Zeke, come but, in. But I'm saying, you see what happened to Zeke. You see what happened to um, Davin Cook. Yeah, Davin, Davin Cook. Cook went for over a thousand last year. Yeah, Davin I really, Cook had a good year. I really last didn't year. understand. I really like Davin Cook, one of my favorite backs to watch. You know, too, I got a chance to business. watch him. You know, when he was younger, and I really didn't understand that. You know, the reasoning. Right. Why. But a lot of times, you look at a lot of these younger dudes are they're prepped and ready. Right, I think it comes down to the passing game. You know, I don't really know what the decision, the and, final decision is. And look, Derrick Henry took a discount too. So what are we going to so do with mean, the running back position? Hold on. So you mean to tell me Derrick Henry shouldn't be making more than McCaffrey? I don't think he should be making more than McCaffrey. I think it should be in the ballpark because McCaffrey does. McCaffrey does both. He catches the ball and runs the ball. You watched that boy this weekend? Listen, when you look at, all right, not last year, but the two previous years, right? We just going to talk about Tennessee as a whole. Everything is King Henry. Like, yes. So we, we so everything is, it changed upon the organization. You talk about Tennessee, King Henry is the whole entire offense. Same thing in New York with right. Saquon. But he's the same in whole entire offense. You talking about? But that's what. But it's just you talking about a you talking about a guy that rushed for two thousand yards, came off that was finna rush for another two thousand yards. But if he wouldn't got hurt, there we go. But I'm just I saying. Say, but that, yeah. But that's what but, they're going. That's so, what they're going off. It's okay. I you looking at that, but you don't you don't feel like he should should be making I, now, more than. No, nah, if I if, if if me personally, I think that when you got a guy that can do both. And be effective in the passing offense, and though. the running. That's within your offense. They but only have that's a quarterback just, to. That's but I'm saying that's <laughs> that's the way the game going. I'm I'm gonna look at a person who can do both versus now King Henry. I think he's so going to get was, everything. So if you start your if you start the franchise right now, and both of these guys in their prime, you taking McCaffrey over Henry. In a passing. No, no, no league. just in. in that, that's what I, that's what I'm about to answer. I'm about to say. In the direction of this game, I'm taking McCaffrey. Because when you take Derrick Henry, can't be on the field on every down. McCaffrey can. Yeah, he can, but you're taking away from your receivers. No, you're not taking away. You got a mismatch. Would you rather go against a linebacker? Can, can a linebacker yes. stop you? No, they can't. But that's what I'm saying. That's, a, yeah. that's an automatic advantage for the running back. The running back has the automatic advantage over that. Right. You're talking about this kid right here. He knows all the tricks of the trade because he was birthed into that position. So with that, when I look at a Christian McCaffrey, he's an advantage when it comes to, okay, one-on-one coverage. You're going to have to put a nickel back on him. 
Yeah, you in. Yeah, you I'm have going Derrick Henry, though. You're going. De- he gonna go Derry Henry because he's Tennessee Spence tight. Went, nah, not even that. I'm, I'm surprised you saying that in the era you came out in. But I can we do 25, both. We 25, 30 touches. But this is what I'm saying. Yeah, but you can do both. But I, but I guarantee I was, you, bro. We I was part of both. 30. Yes, but you 25, 30, 30 you touches. Remember, I was. When, you remember Marsha Falk, Ladanian Tomlinson, myself. Right. We caught the ball also. So I'm looking at it from um, an advantage standpoint. If I say, man. If I'm a coach Come and I say, man, who can have that advantage? EJ, who can have that advantage? I, I'm willing to bet you right now you can't put up a game where you had 10, 15 targets. 10, 15 I think, targets. I think, I think we can I, bet that. I, I, I think we can bet I, that. I because like that. 10, 15, no, nah, come on, man. Man, I'm telling you, like we had a passing come team. On, you had too many, you had too but many you had receivers to, over there. I mean, we gotta go. Marvin we gotta go Harrison. stat check. <laughs> hey, do somebody <laughs> got a stat I check? Guarantee, we I need a stat you check. You never have 15, 15 Nah, I ain't targets. gonna have no fifteen targets. Exactly. But that's as a running targets. back, if I got if I got if I got seven, eight, nine targets, that's great. No, I don't had a six, I don't had a sixty something catch season. Yeah. You know, so it's like you on like you talking yeah. about now. Think about it, that's sixty something back then with turning to seventy something. Now, easily. Man, it's a passing. Get, listen, McCaffrey getting a hundred. That's because, like Eckler, but why? A hundred receptions. Come but on, man. Why is he getting? That's it? taken away from the receivers. No, is he getting it because it's the mismatch. Okay, but so why when you get to the playoffs that never works? I'm when not get saying the playoffs, who, none of who these, went farther. No, I'm just saying who go. That's what I'm saying. We, we can't say it's not working because it don't work. Who name me? Who's a, going name farther? me somebody who won the Super Bowl without a running game. I think the running game is super important. Yes, you know, the running game is super the important. You know, but so if you, I'm, if you but I'm saying Jeffrey, that means you want stats. You want to look good. No, nah, I want somebody who can do it both. I want somebody <laughs> who can do it both. You want to look good but for the preseason. That's needless cool. to say, both backs are great backs. They both fit. But right now, you know, with the direction of the NFL, yeah, where it's going, you know? you know, it's like man, you got to be in that passing game. If you're not in that passing game. You're gonna become extinct. You're gonna become somebody that they doing like how they doing the running backs. You're right. You're right. I agree with you with that. You're gonna be extinct because they don't want to pay you. They want to go younger. And at the end of the day, it's like I feel like at the end of the day, even if you is catching out of the backfield like that, they still gonna go young. I just don't see them paying no running back how they paying the receiver. Yeah, that, and that's that's what that's why I said it's to be determined because. McCaffrey's actually getting paid like the running back should get paid. Right. And so I think you have to have somebody else that's actually doing what he's doing right. to sit up there and say, okay, since he's doing this and he's getting this, I should get this. You know, you have a bunch of running backs that's, you know, they great runners, but for some reason they're not being put in the same category as McCaffrey. Right. They're not. And it probably don't fit the offense that they in. So right now you – what you telling me is McCaffrey is the best running back in the league. I think right now McCaffrey is the best running back right now. He's doing both. Who your best running back? Right now? Take your feelings out. I am. If I if I don't go Derek. Take right now before he got yeah, I was going I like Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb was legit. I like Nick Chubb. I like Saquon. Yeah. They legit, but they don't. They they not doing the same. Nick Chubb was killing it, but they not doing what McCaffrey. That's why I say it's yeah. Like, they not doing. They not going. See, out you there just think about it. Doing all that, just yeah. think about it. If you just just let's just think about it from a, a matchup standpoint. Right. If we go in the passing game, running back versus linebacker, that's an advantage, McCaffrey. Right. And then you also being able to run the game, run the ball. You know, so it's like. McCaffrey gonna have more opportunities to show that he can do things versus the other ones. Right, he don't have to come off the field. Yeah, he don't have to come off low. Right. Saquon, you know, I think Saquon carried that team. I think Saquon, the reason that team, but well, reason that quarterback got this extension, right? And I think he's getting the short end of the stick. Right. But you know, that's one of those things when you look at it, you say, okay, you know, it's not right, but it's happening. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, they find some type of resolution. CJ 2K, one of the only players in the history of the NFL to run for 2,000 yards. And hold on, I got another question. Do you think 
It's 17 games right now. Do you think it's going to be somebody that run for 2,000, like, multiple times versus somebody who just do it one time? Now that you have 17 games and the evolving of the passing game, take that in consideration. Yeah. No, I don't think it's going to happen with the evolving in the passing game. The person that I thought that could do it, he got hurt. I thought Nick Chubb because – 2000, you get Nick Chubb. 2000. The, the reason why I think that is because they go through their running game. You know what I'm saying? It, but you got to like, have a good to, defense. And you got to have a good defense, and yeah. you got to have a team that's going to run the ball, run the ball. And so the year, the year you ran two, because 2000 is hard. That was 16 game. Right. 2000 is about consistency. Mm -hmm. 2000 is about like, hey, I'm showing up every week. You showed up every You're week. Available. Yeah. It's like, so coming into that season, did you think? Hey, I'm gonna run for two thousand. I said it before the season. You said you was gonna run for two thousand. Yeah, I said it before the right. season, and I did it. Yeah, that foresight. CJ Two K <laughs> had foresight. He ran for two thousand. Yeah, one of the greatest players to ever play in the history of the NFL. Hey, we appreciate you for coming on Creative Life Podcast. You know, we want to talk about more than sports because sports is a small part of our life. Or anybody's life, mm -hmm. you know, but it's one of those things that means a lot, but we're able to bring so many people together. I appreciate you, and we'll, we'll be having you on soon because we'll be doing Creative Life live. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.